Well, good evening. We will just give everyone a minute or two just to get up and get online and give them a minute to start sharing this video with us. So if you don't mind, just get yourself a cup of coffee, get yourself a blanket, make sure you're nice and warm, and then we take it from there. Hallelujah. It's so amazing. So amazing. Hallelujah. Welcome, Pastor Z. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. So uh, some of you might have seen already that we've had some uh, experiments, that we've done some experiments on our Facebook Live. And um, I'm pretty sure you, <laughs> you would have seen how we made fools of ourselves talking to a non-live uh, uh, um, video. But that's fine. We love being clowns for the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. We love being in the service of God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Welcome Maritza, Renata, Bertie, Philip. Welcome all of you. Uh, Philip, just so that you know for the record, at this point in time, I cannot bring you on live yet. Um, so I'm just going to give it a bit more time and see um, if Pastor Chris, when he logs up, how we're going to get that going. Oh, welcome Desmond. So awesome to see you as well. God is good. Hallelujah. God is good. He is great. And we just love spending time in the presence of Almighty God. Hallelujah. I trust you all had a wonderful week, that you were all blessed, and that um, despite everything happening or the challenges, we live in good and that you are staying focused on the great I am on God and who he is hallelujah hallelujah so I'm just waiting for pastor Chris we've uh, tested a lot uh, to share a screen with pastor Chris earlier on tonight that's why I say we were playing around on our Facebook live and um, we're just waiting for him also to come on live and then we're going to to get going hallelujah hallelujah so it's so amazing. So just remember, tonight is cell group. Cell group does not mean we have one person talking. It doesn't mean we have just one individual uh, on a Sunday. Wednesday evenings and this type of gatherings is where we come together and where we share together, um, where we talk with one another. Um, so please feel free to share with me, talk with me. I would love to hear your input and, and also scripture that you want to share with us. Um, scripture say that when we come together, one must come with a word and a song. And, and, and so please feel free at any point in time to add your... Uh, your testimony feel free to add your witnesses there share with me talk with me let's interact there's no reason why we should be worlds apart if we have technology that's bringing us together hallelujah so the main thing and the, the beautiful thing about lockdown is how god has brought the church together the, god has brought the, his bride together as one and that is so amazing because you see, it doesn't matter where you are geographically. You may be in Poch, you may be in Durban, in Cape Town, you may be in, in Funnabelle Park. It doesn't matter where you are. We are united here as we as we go forth in on the live streams. And that is so amazing. You see, we are here. Uh, you are a part of the body of Christ, and so we can share in the blessings and in the unity of God. Hallelujah. Uh, Pastor Chris on screen here. Um, I don't know where's Pastor Chris. He ran away. Pastor Chris, you ran away. Please come back. Come back. <laughs> so this is so amazing. We love this. There we go. Pastor Chris is back. I'm adding you, Pastor. So yeah, so tonight our focus and, and our theme for tonight. There we go, Pastor Chris, you're online. Hallelujah. Who is this? Philip. Hello, Philip. Pastor Chris's husband. <laughs> Hallelujah. You are. <laughs> Pastor Chris's husband. We can see you upside down. You must maybe turn us around. <laughs> you're lying to your <laughs> side. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Yay, this is amazing. This is so amazing. So so this was what we were trying to do during our testing session prior to going live. 
And this is what we want to do. Because you see, when we come together, we come together because we want to worship God. Because we just want to spend some time in the presence of Almighty God. Before we kick off, what do we mean by the presence of Almighty God? The presence in which we live. Remember, we live in the Holy of Holies. We live in the Holy of Holies. So what does that mean? It means we stand in the presence of the great I Am, the one who spoke a word and things came into existence. So as we spend time in the presence of God right now, can I just remind you that you are in the presence of Almighty God, the one who simply needs to speak a word and it will come into existence and nothing will pull it away. That is so amazing. Hallelujah. So this is so amazing how Philip can join me on the live stream. Groundbreaking work here with this technology and it's so amazing. So um, we've asked Philip to, to start this cell group session with a song or two. As we get into the presence of God. Hallelujah. So quality is okay. Um, I wanted to use the normal stand, but I need to switch the, the camera around. So I'm like, I've positioned it here now in a way. So hopefully I'm not playing too rough. <laughs> but the, 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 the. Get that deep sea going. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's just get into the presence and. and... Amen. So. Hallelujah. Spirit of Jesus, living with Never to fail or forsake. Unending promise, heaven inside us, whispers the sound of your Amen, amen. Call out to God, church. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are standing in the presence of Yahweh. Yahweh, the great I am, mighty God. We're standing in His presence tonight. So tonight, as, as we are worshiping this song, I want to encourage you to let go of the things that is keeping your mind so preoccupied. I want to encourage you to move into a place of freedom and victory and peace that surpasses all understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, seeking church, seeking church. The more I love you, I want to sit at your feet, drink from the cup in your hands, lay back against you. Fill your heart This love is so deep. It's more than I can stand. I melt in your knees. It's overwhelming. I want to sit at your feet. Drink from the cup in your hands. Lay back against you and breathe. Fill your heart beat. This love is so deep. It's more than I can stand. I melt in your knees. It's overwhelming. Spirit, leave me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would go. Deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever longer presence of my Savior. I sit at your feet, drink from the cup in your hands, lay back against you and free, feel your heart beat. This love is so deep, it's more than I can stand. I melt in your peace, it's overwhelming. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 How amazing is it? Lord, we just want feet and receive from Father's hand tonight, Lord God. Lord, we understand and we do not take this privilege that we have lightly, Lord God, because we understand all too good the price it took for us, Lord, to be in your holy and your sovereign presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, tonight we just want to come and we want to surrender. We want to submit, Lord God, and we will want to come and bow down as we are Wait for you, Holy Spirit, to bring us also a fresh teaching, a new teaching, Lord God. And we thank you for this, Lord God, in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. How amazing is this? So we said, so Spirit, lead me where my trust is without border, Philip. And here we are without borders. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> so this is so amazing. <laughs> Yeah, so this is amazing, guys, and it is so.
class it now at this point so that you can go on with your teaching but at least we know now what we can do forward going forward unless you want me to stay on but i mean you have prepared your teaching so i did prepare my teaching thank you philip so yes you can log off right now i'm sure all the audience would love to hear some more of your your singing um we also have to get into the word here that is just as good so we greet you in the name of Jesus. We bless you. And we also plead the blood of Jesus over you and your house there. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Louis. Amen. Right. So this is so amazing. And we are breaking new ground. This is without borders. You see, we, we learn in a very short um, Especially with this technology, on how we can go, and every day we just develop and we grow and we become more and more clever. And and glory to God. Share with one another and talk to one another. So for some other reason, I can't see any notes here. So if someone can maybe just shout me a hello or something there from your side, so that I can just see that there is some some chats coming through. I cannot see anything currently, but let me know. Hallelujah. But right, let's get into the word tonight. And tonight I want to talk about, when it comes to uh, uh, the word of God, I want to talk about seeking the Lord. And Philip sang tonight, the more I seek you, the more I find you. And, and the question is, are you seeking God? So... We spoke about keeping God first. We spoke about keeping God the main thing and, and how God should be the center of our whole life and our whole being. And that is also our theme for this year in Beth Aran, is where we keep the main thing the main thing. And while we're busy keeping the main thing the main thing, and that is God, we're keeping God the main thing in our life. And while we're doing that, we also execute the Great Commission, which is to go out and make to disciples go out and make reproducing disciples. Um, all right, guys, so I can't see any comments here, so please forgive me if you are sharing any comments, but I do know that the rest of the audience is giving all uh, comments there, so please don't stop talking. Let's keep on sharing. So our focus is all about God, and, and today we are talking about seeking God, and God comes and he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. You see, there's so many things that we need in our life. There's so many other things that is part of our daily life. But God comes and he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God above everything else. You see, in your life and in my life right now, there are many priorities on a daily basis. From the time we open our eyes in the morning until we go to bed, and even during the time that we sleep, there are certain priorities that has to take place in our life. Not to minimize any of these priorities, we have to understand that Scripture comes and He says, Seek first the kingdom of God. First seek God. First seek the, the presence of Almighty God. And all these things will be added to you. So God comes. And, and the question that I got as I was preparing this was that God says that his sheep will know his voice. And here we come and we see that so many Christians in today's life claim to be followers of Christ. If, if you go and you start speaking to people, they will tell you that, yes, I am a Christian. Yes, I am a follower of Jesus Christ. I am a Christian. Jesus says that his sheep will know his voice. His sheep will know him and they will follow him. So if we go and we look at those statements that this world is making so easily in the, today's life, how many of them how many in the church today really knows the voice of God? He says that his sheep will know his voice. How many people really know his voice? If they don't know his voice, why do they not know his voice? Simply because they are not seeking his face. So the reality is that many people do not seek the face of God. So I have to turn away again because I want to take your attention to Isaiah 55, 
Now, I want to start with verse 1, but I'm going to move down all the way to verse 7. But I could, for, for the life of me, I simply could not just focus on verse 6 and verse 7. We have to get the context all the way from verse 1. So Isaiah 55, verses 5 to 6, it says there, and the heading, listen to the heading, invitation to the thirsty. Not invitation to all. It's not an open invitation to all. It is an invitation to those who are thirsty. It is an invitation to those who is seeking the Lord. Hallelujah. So get this. It says here, come all you who are thirsty. Come have no money. Come buy and eat. But isn't this amazing? Come to the waters. Come buy and eat. You see, you still have to come and do something. Even if you have no money, come and buy. You see, it's not going to shift around. You still have to go and to buy. The reality is with a God of miracles, signs and wonders, he will provide for you to be able to buy. Isn't that amazing? Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. How amazing. Now, this is where it becomes very interesting. And this is where I want to stop just for a second. When it comes to verse 2, now get this. It says then, why spend money on what is not bread? Why spend money on what is not bread? And your labor on what does not satisfy? You see, we have all these priorities in our life. From the minute we wake up until the next day, we wake up again. There's certain priorities in our life. And here scripture comes and he says, so why spend money on what is not bread? Why waste your money on stuff that is not going to feed you? Why waste your labor on that that does not satisfy? You see, scripture here comes with the prophet Isaiah, and he's talking about so easy we waste our time, we waste our resources on stuff that is not beneficial towards us. It's there to harm us. Remember, God says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper and not to harm you. So the, the, the prosper and not to harm you is to keep us safe. So don't spend your money on what is not bread. Don't waste your labor on what does not satisfy. What is your priority in your life right now? Tough question, right? Tough question. I so wish I can figure out how to see your comments here. I really, really, really would love to. for the life of me. I'm just trying to switch off viewers here. Let me see. No, I'm so sorry. No comments. No comments. But please do share with, with me your comments. I'm going to watch it on the replay because I really don't want to miss out on any of your comments. So he comes in and says, amongst all your priorities, where do you spend your money? Where do you spend your labor? Is it something that's going to feed you? Is it something that's going to fulfill you? Or do you just squander it to anything that seems to be good? Difficult question, right? But let's go on. It says, here, listen, listen to me. So now remember what we learned in scripture. If something is repeated, it means it's important and we really have to pay attention to it. So here it comes and says, listen, listen. He says, listen. So God is serious here. The prophet Isaiah is very serious here, and he wants to and eat what is creatures of faith. Give ear and come to me. Commander of people. But truly, you will you will summon nations you know not. Why to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One. change the dynamic starts to change and we start getting 
Because we have been endowed with splendor. Isn't that just amazing? Now we get to verse 6, and this is the verse that I would really like to get to, but I just could not get past verse 1. to So verse 6, it says then, Seek, says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to God and he mercy on them and to your God and he will free you. while he may be found call upon God so we need to see God and we need to call upon God so let's talk about this where we have to seek God and call out to God. So, I try to find mean to seek something. What does it mean to, to really look for something? What does it mean? And it says here, it is a verb, obviously. It is to sort or seek, to go and search or go on a, a, a quest, to go on a quest. Now, I always make this joke. I've got this little doggies. And whenever the gate opens, the boy, they run for the street. And I always laugh because I joke and say they're on a on an expedition. You know, they go out on a mission. They have to go and explore. And you see, to seek means we have to go on a mission. We have to go on a quest. A quest is to go and find something very specific. Seek the Lord. Go on a quest and seek something very specific. Are you having a moment yet? Hallelujah. I can't see comments, but are you having a moment yet? Remember, um, Pastor Teacher Cindy spoke about the BAM. I hope that this is also a BAM moment for you. Then further it goes, when he talks about seek, he says, to try and find or discover something. To try and find or discover something. You have to go into the presence of God. Remember what he says? He says, in my presence, I will show you instant things. I will show you secret things. Things that not even the angels know. How amazing is that? Go look at your word. It's there. Go search it. Go get onto that quest to go and find those beautiful promises of God. So we're talking about seeking God. That means we are going into a place, we are going on a quest to go and find the gems and the jewels and the promises of Almighty God. Hallelujah. So I'm thinking about in my own house, the one thing that is forever missing, and I'm sure many of you um, would agree with me, the one thing that is forever missing is a bunch of keys. Doesn't matter where you put it, doesn't matter if you have a, a set place where you put your keys, the keys is forever missing. There's forever a key or a bunch of keys that is missing. It doesn't matter how big finger majinga you put on it, it's missing. Keys is missing. And you see when you need that bunch of keys, there's a search that starts. It's taking place. A search is taking place. It uses a lot of action. Some action is taking place. Now, we've spoken over the past few weeks about getting into the presence of God, soaking in the presence of God, uh, um, being transformed in the presence of God. Over the last couple of weeks, we spoke quite extensively about this. And every time the word action comes up, within this one. So first our hearts needs to be ready and then there has to be an action that allows us to get into that prison. So it takes an action when we seek and then it takes time. I have to sacrifice. I would much rather be in a shopping center shopping to shop something nice. I would much rather spend some time with the people that I love instead of looking for something. But you see, searching for something takes sacrifice. And it sacrifices time as I'm searching for this. And then uh, uh, we will 
spend some time trying to find this thing that we do. We sacrifice the thing. Uh, we sacrifice the things we love or the things that we would rather do in order to find this very thing that I'm after. So we need to seek the Lord's face. We need to get into a quest to go and search for him. Go on to a quest where we can, where we can find him where we can have communion with him, where he can have communion with us, where that, that transformation or, or, or transferring of anointing can take place, that we need to go seek the Lord's face. So let's stop there for a minute. And let me ask you, after everything being said and done, when last, if ever, have you seek the Lord's face? When last did you seek his face? When last have you sacrificed time? When last have you sacrificed some effort and seek the Lord's face? Remember, we're not talking here about the, the, the 30 minutes we worship on a Sunday. We're not talking about the time that the pastors say a quick prayer from the pulpit. We're talking about you and God. Philip spoke last week about in worship, as we go into praise and worship, how it's, it's consists out of a circle, and that circle is just you and God. So when last have it been just you and God? Have you seen his face? Have you gone on to a quest to discover who he is? When last did that take place, if, if, if ever? Hallelujah. So, where does it start to seek the Lord's face? Because like we said right in the beginning of this teaching, the reality is so many people claim to be Christians. So many people claim to be followers of Christ Jesus, yet they do not know how to seek his face. Yet they do not know what it means to sacrifice time, to spend time in prayer in his presence. You see, seeking his face is not a ritual prayer that I quickly say before I eat. Seeking God's face is not just a five-second prayer pray that I pray five minutes before I go to sleep. Seeking the Lord's face means I'm going on a quest and I'm going to spend some time the way that Abraham spent time with God. Hallelujah. So, where does we start to seek the Lord's face? And if we look upon someone in scripture that seek the Lord's face, now we can talk about so many, many people. And obviously the first thing that comes to my mind, if I thought about someone that wrestled with God, seeking God and wrestle with God, we can think of the place called Bethel. Remember how that place of wrestling took place. And, and, but tonight I want to move on and I want to talk about the prophet Daniel. When it's someone who seek the Lord's face and how we could see God's hand after he seeks his face. So in Daniel 9 verse 3, we can read there. As I set my face to the Lord to seek by prayer and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Hallelujah. We have to understand that we live Past the cross, the cross already happened. Post cross, but pre um, ascension. Pre ascension. No, 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 no. I can't see what's the what's the word when Jesus comes to fetch his bride again? Rapture. Rapture. We live post cross and pre rapture. So you see, Holy Spirit is still here. And remember what Isaiah said. He said, "Seek the Lord while He is still here. Call upon His name while He is still near." Right? So we can see how Daniel called to God. He came to God. And how did he do it? He did it through prayer. Let me just get my, my wording right here. He did it through, through prayer and supplication. Supplication, getting into alignment. He did it with fasting. He did it with sackcloth and with ashes. Now remember sackcloth and ashes was in the Old Testament how they would go onto the cloth with ashes and throw themselves with ashes. That was Old Testament. So he went in with prayer, supplication, and fasting. That is how he seeked the Lord's face. And we all know what happened in the lion's den when it came to the prophet Daniel. We know what happened there in the lion's den. A miracle took place. A miracle could be seen. We could have seen God's hand right there. How God controlled even the wild animals. Why? Why? Because Daniel seeked the Lord's face. 
He prayed to God. Hallelujah. So the first step in seeking the Lord's face, the first step in getting, going on to this quest is starting with prayer. So I'm pretty sure you would agree with me, and I'm pretty sure if I was able to see comments that there's a million comments there stating that prayer is an absolute necessity when it comes to seeking the Lord's face. That is why we can, with all the comfort in the world say, a five-minute prayer before I eat, and it's the same prayer that my father said and his father said, that is not seeking the Lord's face. We have to pray for our food. We have to bless our food. Hallelujah. We have to pray for, for God to keep us safe during the night as we go and sleep. We have to do that. But seeking the Lord is different from those prayers. Seeking the Lord is going into a quest through supplication and fasting and looking and wrestle, getting to that place of Bethel, where we wrestle with God. I'm seeking your face. Your word promised that you're going to show me things that not even the angels know yet. Hallelujah. Right. So prayer is having a constant conversation with God throughout the day. Seeking the Lord's face is to draw near to him throughout the day, every day. Every minute of every day. So do we have different priorities in our life? Absolutely. Do we have a priority at home? Children needs to be taken care of. The dogs needs to eat. You know, there's, there's certain priorities and we have to honor them. At work, we do have our superiors at work. And we also have to honor our superiors. Um, but God is the priority. God should be the foundation of everything. You know, the way that I treat the people at home that I care about, we should honor God through the way that I honor them. We should honor God through the way that I humble myself before authority at work situation. You see, it, God has to be, prayer and supplication has to be the foundation of everything that we do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this is really feeling like a Sunday service now because of no comments, but it's good. So when we, when we seek the Lord, when we spend some time in the presence of God, we can go to God and remember what David did. David went and he prayed. He seeked the Lord's face. And David told the Lord that he was angry. Go read the Psalms and you can clearly see how David was angry. Then there were days where David, remember David was a man very close to God's heart. So David told God he's angry. David went and he told God that he is sad. And then there's always days where David just worshiped and prayed God because he was good. So I don't know about you, but sometimes something good happens in our life uh, and something that we've prayed for is happening in our life. And we get so excited and we get so happy about it. And the reality is as you go to your nearest shopping center, you someone want to kiss the first person that walks next to you and tell them how happy you are and how grateful you are. You see, when we are happy, it is then that we need to go and see God's face and bring him glory. You see, often people go to God when things are tough, when things are sad, when things are hard, and when they get despondent. And we should. Scriptures say we should. He says, come to me who are thirsty. If you are thirsty, come to me. That is what scripture is saying. But it's not saying only when you are thirsty. David came and he see God's face even in times when it was good. Even in times when it was prosperous. You see, that time when you walk in the shopping center and you feel like kissing anyone walking past you just because you want to share this joy. I pray that you don't start kissing everybody, right? So don't get this message all, all twisted, right? This is not what it's about. We're talking about getting into a place where we share our joy. And it is even in our time where we share our joy that we have to go in, seek the Lord's face and bring him glory in his presence hallelujah so i've seen often on facebook now i'm not very big on this social media thing i think this this lockdown has kind of forced us to get more onto facebook um, which is good i suppose i've learned a lot of things that i've never known before but i've seen on on, on platforms like facebook and twitter and so forth where people 
would wash their dirty laundry in public. You know, it's a bad day and they cross with people and the whole world needs to know that now they are cross. And now they are upset and no one is going to mess with them. You know, it's these things. And the first thing that comes to my mind is, okay, so you've now taken the time to share it with the whole world. Let me ask you, have you taken it to the Lord in prayer? Have you gone to seek the Lord's face with this very thing that you are busy dealing with? Because you see the reality is this world has nothing to offer us. This world, if they offer you something, it's only temporary. The joy, the victory, the authority. What God has to offer us is something eternal. Whatever is happening with the world out there, make sure you, before you share it with the world that you have first taken it into the Lord's presence. That you, you see that and lose it. He says. That we are more than conquerors. That's a promise in the word of God. He promises that we are more than conquerors. How do we become more than conquerors? By seeking the Lord's face. By getting into that place where we have intimate time with God. Just the two of us. Hallelujah. Now this is where it gets very interesting. And this is where it gets very exciting. And I want to start closing off this message. And did you know that there is a reward for those that are seeking the Lord? I mean, we've been speaking about this over and over and how, how amazing it is and how victorious we can be and how, how, how we can overcome certain things in the presence of God. But there's a reward when we see God's face. Now, remember, we have to get one thing clear, and that is that God cannot lie. You see, if God speaks something into existence, then that is how it will be. No angel, no demon, no height, no depth can keep us away. Nothing can withdraw if God has spoken it into existence. Now let's read there just one minute in Hebrews 11 verse 6. Just go for a minute. Hebrews 11 verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. But he that come to God must believe that he is and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. God is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So you see, this message of tonight, we cannot possibly take it lightly. You see, if the shopping center near you have all of a sudden a sale, I'm thinking of Black Friday as I was preparing this word. But if your shopping center has a sale um, on Black Friday, we can see it. When we go to the shops, it's something is five rand discount, and now they're only limited to three per customer. Remember, we all know that thing that's happening. So imagine your, your shopping center has a sale on cold drink. If you buy one, one liter of cold drink, you get a case of two liters for free. I don't know about you, but that three cases per customer is going to be way too little. People are going to stream to the shopping centers because they want to buy the special. God. The great I am comes and he says that he is the rewarder and he will reward them who diligently seek him. Hallelujah. He will diligently, he will uh, reward those who diligently seek him. Understand the importance of my question. When last have you seeked the face of God? When last have you seek? When last have you gone on a quest into the presence of Almighty God? Because He promised that He is a rewarder of those who seek Him. Hallelujah. Seek with your whole heart. Seek with your whole heart, with everything that is within you, the presence of God. So I want to ask tonight, do you want to have the Lord's favor in your life. What this world has to offer is only temporary. What this world is offering you right now is unable to sustain you indefinitely. You want God's favor upon your life. 
Do you want to receive the reward that God has in store for you? See, this is a promise that he made in the book of Hebrew. This is a promise that he's going to reward you. And when God rewards you, it will not be something that's only going to sustain you temporarily. It's going to be something that's going to sustain you into eternity. Undeniable, you and I desperately need to seek that reward. And the way we're going to receive that reward is if we earnestly seek after God. Hallelujah. So we have so many priorities in our life. Tonight, as you watch this video, or even on replay as you watch this video, I know that there's a lot of priorities in your life right now. I know that there is, in, in some areas, priorities where you, you can't even begin to fathom which one is more important than the next. And many of you are currently in a place where you just, whoever is screaming the loudest, that's the one that gets the priority. I want to encourage you tonight. Above all these priorities that you are dealing with, to seek God's face. To seek the Lord your God. Seek Him with everything within you. Go on a quest. Go on a, on, on a mission into His Word. Find out who God is. Get into His promises that He has for you and I. I pray that God will bless you. I pray number six over you that God will bless you and that He will keep you. That he will shine his face towards you and give you peace. May he give you peace as you seek his face. As you go in and, and, and wrestle in your inner room with him. Do not wait for a pastor to say a prayer on Facebook. Do not wait for someone to send you a little clip with a, with a piece of scripture on it before you get into the word. I want to encourage you tonight. Before you close your eyes to pray, go seek the Lord's face. Go seek the presence of God. Amen. Father God, I just pray for every single person that is part of this platform, Lord. Father God, I want to pray that right now that as they seek your face, Lord, your word says in Hebrew that you are the reward of those that seek you, Lord. And I pray, Lord God, that we as your bride of Christ Jesus, that we will get to a place where we diligently seek you, Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus over every person watching this video, Lord God. Father God, protect their minds, protect their hearts, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we call upon you the great I am. Lord God, and as we spend time in your presence, I pray, Lord God, that you would reveal to us things, Lord God, that not even the angels know, Lord God, and that you that we will get excited again, Lord God, for the things that we, we got lukewarm over, Lord God. Father God, we know the story of the cross, Lord God, but may we get excited again about the empty cross. May we get excited again, Lord God, about a glorified Jesus Christ. May we get excited again, Lord God, about you being a way maker, Lord God, in everything that we do. And we thank you for this, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless you. I'm looking forward to meeting up with you all again Sunday online. Um, Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, we will be back online. And uh, yeah, God bless you. God take care of you. May you have a wonderful, blessed, and a victorious week. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye-bye.